hey, boys and girls, wow, you're in this office. We're kind of tight in here, aren't we, today? Well, you know what? We're going to be doing today's show from this office. This is the secretary's office. You know what? I'm going to go on that side. So if you guys could just move a little, I'll try to get through everybody. Here we go. Come on. Come on with me. Whew. Everybody's just jammed in here today. You know what? Today, um, I know we can't have uh, regular classes downstairs, so I'm going to just be speaking a little longer today in explaining a few of the things that happened here at the church. Now, what we're in today, if you look around, this is the secretary's office. I just came out of my office over there. That door over there that has a cross on it, that's the priest's office, and there's even some little fun little... Uh, comic strip over there. It says psychiatric help five cents. The doctor is in. You see that there? Well, I'm not really a psychiatrist, but a lot of times people come and they talk to me and they tell me some private things. And that's why it's very important that the priest has a very private office, a place that he could just call his own. And anything that happens in there, you know, you should know one thing about the priest, any priest. We are what we call father confessor. What does Father Confessor mean? When we became priests, we took a vow, that, and this is a very serious vow, that if somebody comes and tells us something, we cannot, 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 even if the government, if the police came and said, you have to tell us, we cannot tell what someone has told us in confidence. That's called the vow of confidentiality. That's what the Father Confessor, that's what the priest does. And so inside of our church, you know, how many times have I told you that this church belongs to all of us? This is our church. It's not just mine. It's not just yours. It belongs to all of us. But there are certain parts of the church that do certain functions. And one of them is the priest's office. That's a very private office. And we keep the door closed when the priest, in this case, it's me today, tomorrow, or next day, next year, and maybe somebody else, but whoever the priest is, that's his private little place. The office that you're in right now is called the secretary's office. Now, here at the secretary's office, you could look around. You could see on the walls there's, there's a major calendar of everything that's going to happen this year at the church. And a lot of the calendar is empty because a lot of the months haven't come. We're only in March right now. And there's all kinds of other fun things. There's a big TV over here, so if the secretary needs to tune in to some news thing, especially if something's coming from Armenia, uh, she could get the latest news. There's also a water cooler here, and the water makes us coffee. And you know how much we like to drink coffee, and we like to drink water to clean our system and everything. And then, of course, we have all kinds of computers here. And computers, you know, a few years ago, people didn't have computers, but now we do. And I know a lot of you are, know what we do with the computers. We put together the newsletter. But also, one of the important things that we have here is what's called the SANE program. And that's our information network. And every day, actually every hour, we get news that's coming in from Armenia. So we know what's happening in Armenia. We know what's happening around the world, anything that pertains to Armenia. And anybody who has a computer and a modem from their house can call up and find out this information. And this is something that your church has done. This is one of the first, actually it's the first and only church that does this, and we're very proud of it. It's called the SANE Network, which is the St. Andrew Information Network, S-A-I-N. And we go throughout the world. And there's people who talk about all kinds of things. People like, let's say, you're doing a report on Christianity and you need some information. When did the Armenians uh, accept Christianity? Well, you can call with your computer from home and call up over here, and there's all kinds of files. Files with information on it, files with uh, databases that you could uh, look through and see what you're doing. I know this is going long. Some of you guys got to relax over there, okay? Let's just mellow out. Take a deep breath. Hey, now everybody just calm down for a little bit. Okay. Now what else we're going to talk about today is that I'm going to tell you about uh, the church out there. 
Okay, what, we're, what we have here are some beautiful windows. And when we built this church, we built this because this area here is because sometimes we may want to have educationals where we could stand here and look down and talk about what's happening in the church. Now, the church is the body of believers. Everybody coming together Sunday morning to worship God. And we all get together inside of that room, which is the main part of the church, the sanctuary. Okay, now... I want everybody just to stand up, just for one minute, without making a lot of noise, without commotion. Just stand up, okay? Now take a look out the window. You looking out the window now? What do you notice? The curtain's closed, and that there's a little altar in front of the curtain. Okay, now everybody sit down, okay? Come on, everybody, right now, sit down, okay? No more noise. You know, it's very hard in here. It's, it's, there's so many people in this room. Everybody just mellow out right now. Okay, now what, we're do, what we do during Lent, and you know that we're in the season of Lent, during Lent, we draw the curtain across the altar. And this is to symbolize our separation from God. You remember that when the first week of Lent it was Pate Gintam. We started with Pate Gintam. That was the last message that I gave you about how it's a day of good living. During Lent, it's a symbol. It doesn't mean we're really separated from God because God can never separate. We can never lose God's love. But the idea is that that curtain that comes across the altar makes us think about, makes us realize that there is something between us and God. And what is that thing? It's our sin. Sin, remember, it's not it's something bad. Sin just means that we're not perfect. Nobody is perfect. Can you say that? Nobody is perfect. I want everybody to say that. Nobody is perfect. Okay, now, you know what? I think we're talking a little too loud because people downstairs are probably praying. So let's, everybody, <laughs> take a deep breath. Okay, now let's continue. So during Lent, we draw the curtain, and we don't give Holy Communion. Only in the case that if somebody really feels like it, they could come and see the priest afterwards, and we'll give them separate Holy Communion. But it's the idea that the Badarak, the liturgy, is happening behind the altar, but we cannot see it. We are away from the liturgy. We are separated by that curtain, that curtain called sin. Okay? the things that are wrong with us, the things that we don't do properly in our lives. Okay, people sit through the liturgy, and what we do during the Lenten season is we call it tiv, badarak, which means that we don't sing in the way we usually do. Everything, there's no real glamour, it's just very, it's just said. And in fact, if you listen to a lot of what the priest says, what the choir says, we just recite those parts rather than sing it, because we want to keep that idea that during Lent, everything is kind of mellow, okay? During Lent, our biggest job, especially for you, Sunday school kids, is to look inward in your lives and see what you're doing, you know? All of you have school, you have parents, and you have uh, obligations. Some of you have brothers and sisters. Some of you have some special problems because of parents, because of school, and so on, you kind of look at all of those, and you see, how can you, as a person, make a difference, do something different? Now, today is called the Sunday of the Judge. And downstairs, when you come down for my sermon, I'm going to tell you the story, but it's the story, very basically, it's a story about how we have to constantly, constantly pray. And when we pray, it doesn't mean just to sit like this, but it means to think in our minds. You know, if you pray and say, Oh God, I want the latest new video game. Oh God, I wish that that boy would talk to me. You know, those things don't happen. God's not going to come and throw a video game at your feet. God's not going to go and twist the ear of a boy and say, Go talk to that person over there. No. What prayer does is it makes you realize that if you want things, if you want things done, you have to work for it. It's a conversation with yourself. Not only with God, but with yourself as well. So that you understand that you can do a lot of things. And as I've told you many, many, many times before, you can do 
anything. How come? Because God is with you. You have that power of God within you. And God works with you, and God helps you do those things. Now, <clears throat> the following weeks, I want you just to know about the next few weeks, next few Sundays that are coming up. Today was the Sunday of the Judge. Last Sunday was the Sunday of the Prodigal. The following week is going to be the Sunday of the Steward. Probably the most confusing story you'll ever hear, but I'll tell you about it next week. After that, it's the Sunday of Advent, which means the coming of Christ. And then the curtain opens when we, when we have the Palm Sunday service, and then we have Holy Week. But I'll be talking to you about that separately. I know you've been so good sitting here. And I know some of you back there have kind of been messing up. Even up here, front, in the front. You guys just, I know it's really kind of difficult. This is one of the problems that we have at the church is that we don't have enough room. When we built this church, we had such a small little church before. You know, we had just a house before. And we built this big church thinking that we'd have some more room for everybody. But again, we've gotten so big that we just don't know where to put everybody. So I appreciate, I appreciate that you guys are all listening today and that you all came into this room, into this uh, office over here. And now you're going to listen to your Sunday school superintendent, to the teachers, to the staff. They're going to be giving you some instruction. Then you're going to come downstairs and we're going to pray together and then I'll be talking to you downstairs. So today you get a mega dose of Derha. You not only see me today for a long time on the video, but you see me downstairs. So you guys be good, okay? Take care of one another and take care, most importantly, of yourself. And remember, God loves you, I love you, and what else do you need in life? Listen, you take care of yourselves, and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.